Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we make informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. Before we begin our video, we always like to start off our disclosures. Any symbols that you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, option, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. In each of our videos, we will review the prior system's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the crude and gold charts to come up with leading sentiment. We'll come up with a low volatility watch list, an inside bar watch list, and we'll have an economic uh, calendar update to see what could affect our future and open trades. And finally, if there's time, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Let's pull up the charts. We are starting off with our S&P 500 on a daily chart. And we can kind of see a head and shoulders pattern starting to set up in here with our support here around 1118, 1120. Um, we, again, we're coming down. There's a shoulder. You could kind of say this is possibly a head. Uh, some people might even say the head's here. We're already forming a shoulder. Either way you look at it, there's, you know, there is certainly a bearish pattern put in. You could also just say a double top and M pattern. However you want to label it, uh, there certainly is some weakness. We can see our indicators um, do have room to go lower. You know, it's not that they're oversold yet. Our indicators are not oversold. Our side can go down. Stochastic can go down. Um, so uh, a, a little concern about that, uh, but you know, in it, uh, just like we said before, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens if we do break this wick here. Uh, it certainly seems a test of uh, 1120 will be in the works. Now, as we zoom out, head to the weekly, we can see uh, our 200 moving average here on the weekly, trying to hold up as support. Um, oh, and, and let me go back to the daily just for one quick second. We talked about this last time, the Dave Elliott ice hole pattern. Here we are hitting the 50 moving average, and the, the theory is when you come up and hit these moving averages and fail, that you'll make a new low. So making a new low would be breaking that 1120 range. Uh, going all the way out to the monthly, also we're seeing the 200 moving average holding up a support, so this possible hammer from August is, is is just not working. Kind of putting in an inside bar as we go into this wick here. Um, and ultimately, we'll see again, once again, if this 1120, if the 200 moving average will hold up. And again, our, our monthlies have plenty of room to go down. So our indicators are bearish. Our chart patterns are bearish. Switching over to the NASDAQ and going back to the daily. Again, we can start to see that head and shoulders pattern, shoulder. You can even definitely see more of a head in here and possibly the shoulder coming in here. Um, definitely have to watch. Let's put in our price level here. You can see the wick right here that we're going to go down, and that's going to match up with what's going on in here. So uh, there is, uh, like, like before, support in here. Then we're going to have to watch and see whether or not the, the market can hold up. But just like the S&P 500, our indicators all have room to go lower. So they're bearish. They're not oversold. Going out to the weekly, we can see that the NASDAQ is starting to catch up to the S&P 500. Not quite to the 200 yet. Uh, but, you know, there's a potential to catch it. Uh, so that is a little concerning. And again, the indicators have more room to go. And going all the way out to the monthly. Uh, here we can see that the 50 is holding up a support. But again, that inside bar of the wick from August. Indicators have more room to head lower. So overall, we have to say the S&P and NASDAQ are weak, are definitely weak. What's going to be a catalyst to hold us as we retest the August lows, or are we going to break for uh, new lows? Let's check out our industry leaders. Starting off with a daily chart of Apple, and we can kind of see what happened here. We had a nice little bullish action here as we kind of broke out of this W. 
Uh, but of course, this is basically a lower high from the past swing high here. Um, and we're, we're starting to move lower here back into this range of 360 up to 380. So we're back in that range. Um, I would say it's, it's it's sideways. You know, I'm not going to say bulls or bears. Apple is sideways. You can see the point of control here at 384. You can see all the, the volume that accumulate here. But you can see also this really nice uh, sell-off here um, into the volume support down at 375. So we've got a 50 moving average here. We've got a little volume area in here to act as support. So we'll see for the bulls. But right now, I would say Apple is sideways. Amazon. Amazon, not bad. Uh, made its way back into this range. Uh, hit the right top of this, this range here. And it has fallen off the past couple days. Some moving average support here. Uh, you can see the point of control at 218, kind of where, where we fell off. And now it's coming into some volume support at 210. Uh, down to 28, so uh, which will match up with our moving averages. It's going to see what happens there as we get to the bottom of this range. Uh, but I would say Amazon is also sideways. Google. Uh, Google, after its earnings jumped up and it has really kind of fallen off, now it's sort of a descending wedge here. Uh, you can draw your support line wherever you want. Um, Google's, I would say, sideways to down. It's sitting in a volume accumulation area between 520 and 525, so it's hanging out there. But once it breaks 520, you know, we're heading down to 515. So uh, I would say sideways to down for Google. Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, you would have to say down. Goldman Sachs is bearish. Uh, it made a new low. Uh, so we don't even have that sideways action. Uh, came right through its point of control. Came right through the past volume uh, area here, 104. Now uh, maybe a little accumulation here at 100, 102. But Goldman Sachs is definitely weak. The financials lead us. Uh, Netflix. Once you know, I mean, look at this this move here. That was great. But once we made this high, it's basically making lower highs. Um, continuing to make lower highs here. Um, you can draw in your support here and call it a descending wedge if you want to. So uh, if we break 203, 202, that's certainly going to be bearish. You can see we fell through the point of control 210, accumulating a little bit here around 204. And again, 202, 203 is probably the next area where we make a new low. Finally, we'll go to Priceline. As we talked about, RIM's no longer one of our primary uh, stocks to watch. Oops. And for Priceline, I think we can go with it sideways. Um, hanging out here at its basically resistance price level. Um, however, it did break through its point of control at 536, hanging out down here in another volume accumulation range. Um, but, you know, it's nice to this up. So we got Amazon, Apple, and Priceline all sideways. Google, sideways to down. Goldman Sachs, down. Uh, Netflix, sideways. So the, our industry leaders are, are mixed basically sideways to down. Okay, so we are starting off with the dollar, and uh, we talked about the 1.2% move that it had this week, going to a five-month high. So you can see this consolidation that we were watching here, that basically we've been in since May, just a lot of sideways. And then Friday's price action moved us right out of this. And so um, if I were to zoom out again and see where we're at, first you can see uh, this price action right here so you see this swing low right here so that's something to watch and then uh, this swing high here matches us up with these wicks in here which also matches up with the 500 moving average so the key news here is that we, we broke above 200 moving average 
were out of this previous range, were above this wick here, which failed at the 200 moving average. And so hopefully this new range for the dollar, uh, again, uh, now hopefully between 77 and 78.8 8 can be our new range. Uh, so the strength in the dollar, what does that mean for gold? Well, we can see gold has entered a sideways price action. We got resistance at 1900. Uh, we put in a little inside bar here. Uh, but overall, gold seems to be moving sideways. The 20 moving average continues to act as support. And so I'm going to be watching that, looking for buying opportunities. Finally, oil. Oil seems to be in a rising wedge, ascending wedge pattern, resistance of the 50 moving average, uh, point of control at 89. Uh, so that's something to watch. If we can get above 90, then uh, we will be short of getting back into our range above 92. But really, uh, if we can get above 90, it uh, gets above the 50 moving average, and we can continue to see this uh, uh, bullish uh, price action continue. As we move to our education spotlight, we uh, have started our conversation about trading plans. And one of the main reasons we want to use trading plans is it helps us document our, our system. And we find out, A, if it's the right system for us, and then B, we find out if the system works in the way that we are implementing the system works, or our stops in the right place, or our targets in the right place. And the reason why we want to do that is so that we can have positive expectancy to know that over a period of time, we will have our winners outweighing our losers. And see, what so many people try to focus on is they try to hit home runs. But trading is not about hitting home runs. It's about hitting for average. You know, Derek Jeter just had his 3,000 uh, hit, you know, what was that, last month or before. You know, he's not a power hitter, but he had 3,000 hits. Um, our job is to get on base. Sometimes we'll get all four. We will get a home run. Sometimes it's just a single. But the most important thing is, is just to keep it to a strikeout, just to keep it to an out that doesn't get us ejected from the game. Trading is not about swinging for home runs every single time. It's about getting on base. It's about being in position to score and taking advantage of a wild pitch of a fastball, something that you can hit, and driving it when you can, but most importantly, knowing when to take the ball and when to sit on the sidelines when necessary. You know you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? We have our same resources for you, our free five-part video course on high probability trading. It will give you insight into who we are as coaches and help you design your own high probability trading setups. Um, and then again, by giving an insight of who we are coaches, this is where we can make a difference. We do have a system that we can sell you, not for $5,000, $4,000, for $250. It's got the same information all those other systems have, but it's not these systems that can change you. It's coaching. It's developing a trader's mindset, and we can do that as we work with you one-on-one. -on -one. We have our same futures brokers, 20 free trades. If you sign up with them, enter their margin, low as $300. And our charting package is great because you can, um, it works both on PCs and Mac to run all your scans and find your fast moving stocks. As we said, it's not about a home run. It's not even about a triple. It's about recognize when to swing and when to take. It's about hitting for average and not for hitting for power. And we can help you do that through our coaching program. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.